Hello and welcome everyone. This is Type V3 with a gunplay review of the 1 to 144th scale, high grade, high mock. The battle system simulator mobile suit seen in Gundam Build Fighters Try, or as it's unofficially referred to, Bandai's official bootleg gunpla. First things first, the high mock comes in a small box. Its footprint is the size of a normal HG, but it's about half as thick, so it shouldn't come as a shock when I tell you that the entire kit is comprised of only four items, and one of them is a tiny foil sticker sheet. Two plastic frames and a large set of poly caps make up the remainder. Conceptually, the build can be described by taking huge hollow plastic parts and having them held together by numerous poly caps. It's by no means complicated, though it can be tedious. Either way, assembly is ultra quick, rivaling that of an SD Gundam. Whatever your opinion is on the design of the high mock, this kit nails the look. Proportions are appropriately awkward, and the simple, curvaceous lines don't break from the original line art. Most of the small details seem to be included too. Stickers are used for the red dots on the shoulder pads and the mono eye. However, when it comes to the actual colors, that's where things get a little dodgy. From the parts breakdown, you're already made aware that this kit only carries one shade of green, so the two-tone green color scheme seen in the anime will have to be painted on separately. There's also some red highlights needed throughout the body, as well as green for the back thrusters. On the other hand, when it comes to panel lining, there's not much to do in this area. To be honest, I can't really say if half these additions are necessary. What I do know is that the high mock serves as a great foundation for some simple customs. For size comparisons, the high mock is 4.5 inches tall, standing somewhere in between the average SD and HG kit, although it certainly is wider than either. For articulation, the head is on a simple swivel, so right and left is all you're going to achieve here. The torso has two ball joints, one in the upper chest section and one down at the waist. Together they can give you a little bit of an ab crunch, a little bit of a coming back, and then of course you can go side to side and all the lateral movement you'd expect. For the arms, you're looking at a swing out poly cap. There is a ball joint there so you get your full 360 degree rotation. You can see that there's the hinge there for the shoulder, it comes outwards. You do have a bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, pretty decent range, and a ball jointed wrist. For the hips, the side skirt armor is just on a simple hinge that goes upwards. You can rotate them as well, but there's really no need to. The actual hips themselves are on universal joints so they can go forwards, pretty decent. Backwards is pretty decent. Outwards is a bit weak, and it's not limited by the hip or anything. It's actually just limited by the way the joint is constructed. So that's all you're going to get out of the side hip movement. There is a thigh swivel, a really nice double jointed knee. And of course, the ankles are on a ball joint at the bottom. But there's also a second ball joint up here somewhere where the shin is. And together, you can hinge them forwards and sideways. Uh, you can do a lot with these ankles. I was actually really surprised by how much they could move around. I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised by how much articulation the high mock has. After all, this is an HG kit. Still, I'm shocked to see it can hold its own in opposing competition. Sure, it has its limitations here and there, yet I didn't have too many problems putting it into more complicated displays. When it comes to accessories, the high mock includes a single machine gun. It's basic in appearance as it's entirely molded in grey. Details can be added at your discretion. The mobile suit can wield it in either hand, otherwise there's not much else to say about it. It's a gun. It goes bang, bang. Interestingly, the high mock also comes with wrist adapters. With these, you can put on 1 to 100 scale Gundam hands to use even larger weapons. It's a bit silly, though it does add another layer to customizability. Going in, I didn't know what to expect from the high grade high mock. I mean, I've never been the biggest fan of grunt suits, green isn't exactly my favorite color, and truthfully, I didn't have any interest in it to begin with. Now, that type of negative attitude will definitely have an impact on my final thoughts, so with that up front, I absolutely adore this kit. More than anything, it's just refreshing. It takes the simplicity of an SD kit, like the beginner friendly build and low cost, and combines it with the qualities of an HG kit, allowing for good articulation and playability. It's incredibly satisfying. Yeah, it's got some weak points, that's for sure. The lack of a second shade of green plastic and the minimal accessories are probably the two major ones. Still, I can't say I feel disappointed. Thing is, the kit retails for 800 yen, and I'm more than happy with what's already included. Anything else would just be a bonus. Moreover, with the low cost of entry as well as the super quick and easy build process, I'm even tempted to army build this mobile suit. At the very least, the kit is a great way to experiment with and build up modeling techniques. Regardless of purpose, 
Bandai absolutely nailed it with the 1 to 1 44th scale, high grade, high mock. It's extremely well done and easily up there with some of the best the Build Fighters line has seen. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching, and I do regret only ordering one high mock. Question is, how many more to get?